So the first color is um, this one. It's called Bismuth Yellow, and it's uh, PY184. It's a uh, opaque color, and it's granulating. Neil Smith's version is called Bismuth Vanadate Yellow, and Shaming's version is the Vanadium Yellow. Next is Hansa Yellow. Hansa Yellow is PY3. I think it's also known as Lemon Yellow, if I'm not wrong. And yeah, this is a lemony, very bright, cheerful lemony yellow. Um, very clean and it's a cool yellow. Transparent, as you can see. Yeah. Cadmium Yellow Light is PY35. It's opaque, granulating. Azo Yellow is PY151, it's a transparent color and staining. Daniel Smith's version go by the same name, uh, but the one in Shermink goes by an uh, Aurorian hue. Next we have Hansel Yellow D. It is PY97, transparent color, staining. was contaminated by by the uh, cerulean blue so uh, so far after cleaning it off I think it's okay cadmium yellow py35 opaque granulating color and can, can you see the granulation here okay so let's just put a little bit of like water to it can you see that difference. Cadmium Yellow Deep, right, made from the same pigment. This one looks a little bit like a gamboge color, gamboge, which is next to it. Yeah. And then we have gamboge. And this color is made from like two pigments. Um, if I'm not wrong, 151, the Azo Yellow, and PO62. So what is PO62? Azo Orange. So it's made from two Azos. Next is the Indian Yellow. Indian Yellow is also transparent. Um, in the past, Indian Yellow is made from like um, the urine of cows. It is PY110, transparent staining color. Next is Azo Orange. Okay. It's PO62, transparent staining color. Smith's version is called Permanent Orange, and uh, Shemink's uh, version is Chromium Orange Hue. Next, we have Cadmium Orange. It's PO20, opaque granulating color. There are three versions of this color in the Shenming series. And there's no equivalent version in the Daniel Smith series. Okay, now we have uh, Scarlet Pyro, PO73. It's transparent. It is called Pyro Orange in Daniel Smith. Um, Daniel Smith also has a Pyro Scarlet, but that is another pigment. Quinacridone Red. Okay, it's uh, PR209. It's a transparent color and it's staining. It doesn't say anything about the granulation, but seems like there's some particles, which is kind of strange for synthetic pigments like quinacridones. The next color is cadmium red light, PR108, opaque granulating. 
There are three versions of cadmium reds in this series and this is one of it. Next we have Nephol uh, Red, it's PR112. There are no equivalents in uh, Shermink and Daniel Smith series, but in Mission Gold it is permanent red. It seemed to be granulating when wet, but when it dries it is not. Next we have Pyro Red. It is PR254, semi-transparent and staining color. The color is also available in Sir Mink and uh, Daniel Smith and under the same name, Pyro Red. The next color is Cadmium Red, PR108, um, opaque granulating color. We have already seen this uh, same pigment under Cadmium Red Light, but this Cadmium Red here uh, is slightly darker. Next color is Cadmium Red Deep. Cadmium Red Deep is PR108. It's an opaque color, same color as the Cadmium Red, but I believe the color is um, a darker, it's a, a darker red color. So similar to the Cadmium Red, you do see some granulation at a diluted, when it's diluted. the Quinacridone Rose, okay, it's a beautiful it's PV19 transparent rose color that we can use to mix a uh, beautiful violet, violets and purples. In terms of um, light fast, the smaller the number, the more light fast it is. So this is the worst performing, least light fast color uh, in the M gram uh, watercolor series. Most of the other colors, if I didn't mention them, uh, they, they are LF1. So they are extremely highly light fast. So this one here is LF3. So hmm, fairly light fast, I think. Okay. So this is Elizarine uh, Crimson. Okay, not known to be a very uh, this pigment, the P PR eighty three, is not supposed to be very um, light fast. Now we have a permanent uh, Elizarine Crimson, which is PR two six four, slightly better in the L in the light fastness as in its LF two, um, and it's transparent and staining. Maroon Perilin. Oh, love this color. It's a deep, deep red, brownish, maroon reddish color. Really intense, beautiful red, deep brownish, dark red color. Beautiful. Next color is Ultramarine Pink, which is PV19. The same color as our um, quinacridone rose. Such a beautiful purple color. It's like a magenta. I, I really like this color a lot. It's, it's just, it feels like there are actually two colors in there, but it's actually just one. You know, it's like, is this a pink or is this a purple? Seem like a purple. Next we have Quinacridone Violet PV19 again. <laughs> okay, this is really a, a violet-ish color. It's transparent and staining. Somehow it seemed granulating to me. I, I don't know. But the tinting strength, I think it's not so strong. Yeah, this is as much as strong as I can, can get. This is as strong without it get looking streaky. So we have Mineral Violet, it is PV15 and it's supposed to be a semi-opaque colour, okay? 
and granulating. Can you see that granulation? This granulation is pretty awesome. The next color is cobalt violet. It is uh, PV14, semi-transparent granulating color. The granulation is just mind-blowing. Uh, equivalent version in Daniel Smith is cobalt violet deep. This is ultramarine violet deep PV15, transparent granulating color. There's also another PV15 later on, but it looks really different. The next color is dioxazine purple. It is PV23, uh, transparent staining color. So this color has one of the strongest tinting strength um, that I know. Uh, it is LF2, so it's slightly less. Uh, light fast. The next color is ultramarine violet PV15. We have already seen the uh, other version earlier. This is a transparent granulating color and I really really love this one. It's really really close to uh, ultramarine blue but more purple. And we have ultramarine blue PV15. B29 transparent granulating color. Uh, this color is less granulating than uh, the versions, other versions that I have seen. Next, we have cobalt blue. It is PB28 semi transparent uh, granulating color. And the next color is uh, Entraquinone Blue, PB60 Transparent Staining Color. So this is also known as the uh, Indentrine or Indentron Blue, one of my favorite blue colors. Cerulean Blue, PB36 Semi-Transparent Granulating Color. Also one of my favorite blue colors. Daniel Smith's version is made from PB35. So this is the Cerulean Blue Deep. Same thing, PB36. And semi, this is semi-opaque granulating color. This is the phalo, phal phalo cyan, cyan in blue, red shade, okay, um, a very staining blue color, so if you unfortunately got it, got your palette stained with this, it's gonna be really hard to remove. Prussian blue or PB27, transparent staining color. It's like a indigo color, like a really dark. Like can also like the uh, entraquinone blue. You can get like a really dark color when you use it concentrated. Okay. Next, we have the phalo phalo cyanine blue. And this one is not the red shade, so this is the probably the green shade. In the um, Daniel Smith, you have the green shade and the red shade, shade. So this is most likely the green shade. So it's made from PB15 colon 3. The red shade is made from PB15 colon 1. Okay. Same similarly, you could get a really really dark, deep dark tone. Transparent staining color. Next we have the manganese blue. So manganese blue is actually the same as the phalo cyanide blue, cyanide blue. 
except that there is PW4 in there, which is like a white, supposed to mimic or supposed to replace the uh, manganese blue. If you note that the uh, mask tone is not as dark. Next is Cobalt Till PB28, semi opaque granulating color. Daniel Smith and Shermink uses a different pigment PG50 for this color. Next color is turquoise. So turquoise is actually a mixture. So it's a mixture of uh, the PB15 colon 3, which is the phthalo blue, and PG7. PG7 is the uh, phthalo green. Okay. So this is a very common mixture. Um, in white nights, they have this. And it's also one of those where you can you can get very very dark colors. Next we have phthalo green, which is a PG seven transparent staining color. This is also one of the most staining colors that you can actually use. And I have ruined so many white brushes because of this color. This is one of those colors that you don't really use it neat because you don't see this color very often um, by, like, like that. Uh, but it's very, it's an essential color for mixing, especially uh, for hues of green colors. So the Viridian is like the phthalo green except that it is uh, muted and it's granulating. So can you see how beautiful that granulation is? It is made from the pigment PG18, transparent granulating color. We have the phthalo green, um, but the yellow shade over here. It is PG36, uh, transparent staining color. It's more yellow than the phthalo green PG7. In Shermink, it's called uh, Helio Green, and in Mission Gold, it is called Bamboo Green. Next we have cobalt green, which is the one that um, <laughs> caused all that trouble. Unfortunately, a lot of it went to another pan, right? But it's a semi-opaque granulating. It's like the cobalt green deep uh, that you use for some of those uh, shrimp granulating colors. At the bottom, when we dilute it down, you get a nice granulating soft muted green color. This is permanent green light, semi-opaque staining color. It's um, those bright, vibrant green color. It's made from PG7, PY151, a mixture. So then a lot, there are not a lot of mixtures um, in the M-gram watercolor. This is one of them. Okay. I think it's just a very convenient mixture that you can get with the uh, phthalo green. 151 is the ASO yellow. Next we have permanent green pale. Permanent green pale is also a mixture. Okay, this is like your uh, May green, uh, the pale 
uh, green color that you use for meadows, uh, convenient mixture as well. PG7, phyllo green, PY3, the uh, Hansi yellow. And strangely, the uh, light fastness is LF2, which is slightly lower. Next is Focus Green. It's also a mixture. Ooh, it's a very interesting green color. It's very different from what I know. So I think Focus Green is a convenient mixture. Um, and it depends on who you get it from. Um, different makers make different versions of it. Uh, the Hookah's Green in M grams is like a deep olive green color. It's made from made from PG seven um, and PY one one zero. The Indian Yellow. Next we have Sap Green, made from the same pigment. Ah, <laughs> it it's it looks like the Hookah's Green, um, but it probably has got more yellow in it. Transparent staining color. Next, we have olive green. So, olive green here is a mixture of three different pigments. Oh, wow, it's like a brown. <laughs> oh, why does it look like a brown color to me? It's like a burnt umberish color. Maybe it's because of PBK6. Okay. So the olive green looking very brown. Next we have the azo green. Azo green is different. Very different from what I've expected from the color. Because the color looks so strong, so dark. But when it goes down onto the paper, it's it's just so so transparent and I think if you dilute it, if I dilute it down a little bit more, uh, can be like a yellow color. Can look a bit streaky though. I, I think this is more an olive for me than it is than the one next, the one on the left side, left hand side. So we have the transparent, uh, yellow iron oxide. So this is PY for the two, granulating and transparent. Beautiful color. So when you use really thickly, you can get these like really brown, streaky brown color. Next is yellow ochre. Here it's semi-transparent. Some of the yellow ochres are actually like Pre-opaque. It's a PY43. It can look quite opaque when you thick. So this one here is raw raw sienna. The raw sienna here is a PBR7 semi transparent granulating color. I like the granulation as well. It's even more pronounced than the uh, yellow curve. The next color is Nickel Azo Yellow. This is a PY150. It's a pretty unique color because it becomes, uh, when used thickly, it's actually quite brown. But when you thin it down, it's a beautiful yellow color. It's very light and bright as well. So it's uh, transparent staining color. The next color is Naples Yellow. It's a PBR24 opaque granulating color. This one is pretty opaque. 
I, I foresee using this probably as like a skin color. MG's Napus Yellow is very different from the other makers because most of them included uh, white in it and they tend to look a little bit less uh, brown and more pastel yellow. So this next color is Nickel Quinacridone Gold and it's a mixture of two pigments, the PO48 and the PY150 which is the azo, Nickel Azo Yellow Transparent. It's, it's uh, pretty similar to Queen Gold from Daniel Smith. Can be streaky. Next color, transparent orange iron oxide. It's PY42, PR1. Oh, one mixture of two colors it's like a yellowish brown it's transparent granulating pretty pretty granulating but doesn't get very dark uh, when used thickly next is a uh, quinacridone rust uh, this is the color that got contaminated by the uh, cobalt green that's on top. It's uh, like a burnt sienna color. It's PO48. Smith has a similar version and it's called Quinacridone Burnt Orange. Transparent red iron oxide PR101. It's transparent granulating color. Like a reddish brown. So we have burnt sienna PBR7, semi-transparent granulating color. It's pretty close to the transparent red iron oxide, except this one is slightly more, less red, more muted. Next color is Terra Rosa. It's like an Indian red color. I think it's PR101. Yeah, I think it's Indian red. It's a opaque granulating color. But it's kind of more purple, more, more violetish than the one that I have. This color is Burnt Umber. It's a PBR. Seven. Semi-transparent granulating color. And now we have the uncooked version, the raw umber PBR7. Semi-transparent granulating color. It looks more burnt than the burnt umber. So next we have Sapia. So Sapia is made from the pigments PBR7 and PBK6. So it's uh, the umber plus uh, a black. 
It is a semi-transparent color, granulating. The next color is Ivory Black uh, PBK9, semi-transparent granulating color. So this one is not very strong uh, and, and you can use it lightly for some texture. And this is Lamb Black um, PBK6. It is uh, a semi-transparent color and granulating as well. This is neutral tint PV19 PG7. It's like a violetish black transparent staining color. Easily mixable because you can just get a PV19 PG7 for this. Color is Payton's Grey. It's a PBK9 and PB29. So it's like ultramarine plus a black color, which is a very common mixture uh, from manufacturers of uh, watercolor. So the first white is uh, Chinese white, opaque, uh, granulating. Can't see how granulating it is. Yeah, but as you can see, it's kind of opaque as it covers up the lines. Okay. And the next one is titanium white, which is also opaque, PW6. This one is less, this is more white. That one is a little bit off white. So slight differences there. This is more bluish white color. Yes, it's done. Uh, this is the full swatch, swatch of all 70 colors from the Anne Graham Holmes watercolor. Uh, I must say I'm very impressed with how intense, how strong the colors are and when when doing application, like how much, like I only need to use very little of the color to, to, to get these intense colors, uh, blocks of colors over here. The thing about the M gram colors is that they are also, they are, they, they, they included like almost all the important pigments or important colors that you need when you are painting and you're painting watercolor. Um, there's no repeats and there isn't like a non-granulating and granulating version of the same color. Um, and they many of these, there are several, especially those in the brown section, some of the greens, um, that they actually do have a few mixtures here and there, convenient mixtures, but most of them are single pigment. And the colors, I, I'm, there isn't one that I think is weak at all. I don't see one that is like weak. Um, it, it's really, really like a dream come true. Um, I, I first go through colors that I find a bit strange. Um, so firstly would be um, would be the hookah green, which I thought it's a little bit too 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 dark. To me, hookah green is a little bit more like this color. Um, 
and the sap green is also kind of dull so these two colors are mm, maybe I'm used to the one from Daniel Smith so I find it a little bit dull um, and also the olive green can be brighter I think um, but it's really quite brown over here um, other than that I would say um, ultramarine blue to me is not granulating enough it's, it's very soft um, it's more the ultramarine light you know there's the dark and the light version some co some colors um, brands have it so this one to me is not um, yeah not that impressed with this one so something that I like to bring to your attention is that um, uh, for M. Graham colors, if you look at the swatch, um, they do look a little bit more gritty and uh, granulating than most other colors, um, especially for those colors that are supposed to be uh, that ha has supposed to be uh, non-granulating. For example, like the phalos, some of the azos and the quinacridones, which which is kind of like a, a, a kind of puzzling to me, um, but. I, I think there is a phenomenon where they call uh, flocculation. So if we look at this uh, in, in detail, uh, if we look at the um, azo green, azo yellow, and the quinacridone rust, you will actually see a little bit more of that uh, granulating particles. And um, this is called flocculation, or where, where, where certain particles, certain pigments are not supposed to gr be granulating. Um, and, but yet, the particles are, are stick together, they clump up and they do get, you get this kind of uh, issue. So if you compare it to Daniel Smith, um, this, is, this is not seen. And also um, for uh, Sir Mink and the Mission Gold colors, they, they, they do have not have this, this, this problem. But when it's diluted, it's okay. So you don't get this issue when it is um, diluted, right? But when, only when it's used like thickly. All right. So it depends on from people to people. Uh, some people may not find this a problem, but for some who really requires like a clean, flat wash uh, with no clumping, no 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 particles, just use it dilute uh, in a dilute manner. So let's talk about the colors that I think are really good and uh, that we should get. So uh, what are my favorite colors? So um, I quite like the Indian yellow because it is a very strong uh, yellow color, stronger than the gamboge that I, I know from Daniel Smith. Um, I also quite like the uh, permanent uh, lizarine crimson. It's very strong uh, red. The maroon perilin, uh, the ultramarine pink. The ultramarine pink is rather nice, um, but we have equivalent. I think it's quinacridone violet or something um, for Daniel Smith. Um, uh, the the uh, Graham M. Graham has quite a good range of purple. I think they are violet, violet color. They are all single pigment, and they are they are also beautiful. Like they're granulating. The granulation is just so beautiful, and they are all like different. So I I think if you really love purple, violet colors, you can very safely just get everything from M. Graham uh, uh, the ultramarine violet, I absolutely love it. Um, and uh, the blues are not too special. Um, these are very standard blue colors, except that the uh, cerulean blues are actually, um, they use PB36 for both cerulean blues, so I don't know how they did it. <laughs> Most of them also have a PB35, which, which they don't use. Um, the cobalt teal is also a different pigment um, from what I usually use. Um, I quite like the turquoise, but I already have this in the um, from White Nights, the turquoise blue. I love the Viridian. The granulation is just amazing. Um, I do like the uh, Azo Green, um, very interesting. The Azo, uh, Nickel Azo Yellow as well. Um, and I also really like this one, the Nickel Quinacridone Gold, which is very close to uh, the Daniel Smith Quinacridone Gold. And with regards to the browns, I, I also like the Rust. Quidoquido rust and the transparent red iron oxide and I think I would um, probably um, you know I can't decide between which this two which one I really like more um, but if I, I would definitely use either one of this in place of the burnt sienna because the burnt sienna looks very kind of muted okay um, and the uh, browns are pretty the blacks and and, and the uh, whites are just yeah pretty uh, standard colors so 
Um, the thing about Anne Graham's watercolour is that they do not have any pan colours. Um, I think the reason for that is because um, most of the colours, um, even if you look at my the, the current the, the set that I have, they do not dry um, so easily, so they are not going to risk it. So everything is in a, in a tube of 15ml. Uh, um, so they do have um, separate like smaller sets, um, they have about 13 of, 13 of them, 12 12 sets are five colors and they have different themes and there's one that has got 10 colors um, and uh, um, they, they actually include colors like azo yellow over here, azo orange, uh, burnt sienna which is this one, the dioxazin purple, um, nickel quinoquinone gold, permanent arizarine crimson, phthalo green which is this one, uh, pyro red I guess is this one, uh, the set green uh, <laughs> and ultra marine blue okay i will just give you the link to um, the uh, jacksons uh, to to look at them all right so this is what i have um, and uh, i hope you've enjoyed uh, the past 40 minutes uh, this is a very excessively long video so um, is this kind of a new format for me um, having such a long video uh, and, and going through in details how the colors look like so if you like to have see similar swatch videos uh, in this way uh, let me know in the comment section below because uh, I managed to procure several swatch cards of our entire series of colors and let me know if there's any other uh, brands that you like to see and I will try my best to get them all right so I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.